Foot Clan, we've been digging into the numbers, and today we reveal some stat surprises for 2023, things we discovered in our rankings. The Ultimate Draft Kit is coming out very, very soon, under 10 days until it comes out, and we talk about a ton of mailbag questions, some NFL news, and a lot more on today's show. Leave a comment. Don't miss a minute. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday. May 23rd, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, I'm Andy Holloway. Joined, as always, by the Deucers, Al Borland, Judge Giamatti, the Borgogan, hanging out in Deucers Alley today. Happy to have you with us. Gentlemen. Yes. Nine days left until the ultimate draft kit. Ooh, baby. Which means... That's not enough time to do the amount of videos we need to do. Oh, yes, it is. Uh, so I've enlisted I Al to... Ooh, AI? Uh, well, Industrial Light and Magic, actually. We're going to go okay. Pixar style. Oh, nice. And so these will be the first time our videos are entirely... Now, you get to pick your Pixar I mean, character. Those were two different companies, but... That's true. <laughs> yeah. You um, went Lucas and Disney. Oh, I guess Lucas is oh. Disney now. Thank Wait, you, Mike. Does Disney Thank own you. Industrial Light and Magic yeah. now? Yeah, they do. Maybe. Okay. They might. Are they cro um, are they crossing over they with Pixar? They Pixar's? definitely they might. They definitely <laughs> might. Uh, but but you get to pick your character is what I'm saying. So figure it out. Let them know. Probably probably have to do the videos with ourselves this year and work on that for next year. But nine days left until the Ultimate Draft Kit. Very excited. If you have not picked it up, that means you got nine days left to get it at a pre-order discount. Um, save some money on it. All of our sleepers, breakouts, busts, values, player projections, uh, we're there. We're, we're at the cusp of the new season. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. And that's ultimatedraftkit.com. But uh, we were in the thick of it this morning. We've got some insights. We're in the thick of it. <laughs> we've got, thank you. Uh, we've got some insights we'll share here in the quick question. That's but, for, the, that's for the, the kids. The song. Yes. Yeah. The backyardigans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you run our TikTok, right? Uh, yeah, I mean. That's. Yeah, on there all the time. Just risen. Jason. Am I, am I using that right? Just Probably not. Not, <laughs> not right. Um, how you doing, Jay? Doing great. I am excited to do this show. I've never been more ready for it in my life. This is UDK season. We are uh, full of all sorts of fantasy football knowledge and information. I'm ready to spew it. All right, quick question. Um. What's something that surprised you while statting out every team and every player for the 2023 Ultimate Draft Kit? Uh, we've all been through every roster. We've looked at uh, all the coaching changes. We've looked at what happened last year uh, in terms of everything from um, positional target share, player target share, uh, distribution in the backfields, uh, quarterback play, ebbs and flows at, you know, with passing touchdowns. Uh, rushing touchdowns. What what's something that at the top of your mind jumped out when you when you stepped back for a minute and looked at how you saw the 2023 season statistically? Yeah, one thing that stood out to me that was a little scary. I did not like it. I was like, ooh, that that feels bad. It feels wrong. Um, it feels against my beliefs of this player as a talented young strapping running back. But Kenneth Walker was very low in my initial rankings. I've taken a look and 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 tweaked it slightly, made sure he's where I would draft him. But I have fears um, of this talented running back. Obviously, um, you know we know that he was hurt, and the value of uh, of Charbonnet, Zach Charbonnet, the rookie running back they drafted in the second round, both of those guys took a ding when they went to. Uh, you know, play on the same roster together. But when I was statting them out, I've got the 
Seattle Seahawks actually going up in total rushing attempts this season, uh, despite the acquisition of JSN. But when you look at what Kenneth Walker did last year and the injuries around him, the lack of Rashad Penny, uh, when he was able to get the bulk of his carries, how he was as a player, which was not as effective as you think. He wasn't a great on a per play basis running back. What he was was an incredible home run hitter. Um, he ended up just really being uh, effective for explosive plays. And so when you look at this team that likes to run the ball, that has had, you know, a couple backs together that haven't been able to be healthy when they, when they had Rashad Penny and then they drafted Kenneth Walker, I believe that they are going to use Charbonnet a lot. I don't think they spent a second round pick to get a backup. I think they brought in a guy who has a different skill set than Kenneth Walker. And my fears are that this specific skill set that Charbonnet has, and the reason why I loved Charbonnet so much leading up into the draft, are the skills that score fantasy points. And so, specifically, he's a great pass catching back, of which Kenneth Walker didn't do in college and really didn't do much uh, last year either. So I, I think Kenneth Walker's not going to catch the ball enough where it's like, he's got to score touchdowns then. And he is now the smaller of the two backs in that backfield. I think Charbonnet is a pile pusher. And when they get around the goal line, will it be Walker? I mean, Walker could easily have a great season by just ripping off four or five 40-yard touchdown runs. And then, great, what a great pick. But I have fears when I look at my stats of probabilities that, like, I think he's not going to score as many touchdowns as we want. He's not going to catch the ball enough, and that equals a bad fantasy pick for where he's going. I, you're, you're, I know you're on. No, uh, no, uh, I'm not sides. on the complete opposite side. I, I think you've swayed me a little bit. You've, you've caused me to take a deeper look at that backfield, including kind of the initial, um, I guess what we're hearing in the press coming out of rookie, um, the the first look at Charbonnet. I am I'm a little worried that you're going to be spot on there if you're a if you're a Walker um supporter because it's really hard to repeat the big play predictability aspect in fantasy like he is a shifty guy he's going to have his home run plays but that's a really really hard thing to predict it doesn't happen year after year after year for a lot of running backs um so this is one where like you know we say on the show if you're new to the show, it's a common phrase. Like the idea of staying water heading into the season, that's going to be in play here for Charbonnet and Walker and what they look like at camp because, look, he's still a rookie. So he still has to cross some thresholds in training camp with the coaching staff, the trust factors, all of the things that rookies have to do, right? We've had a lot of rookie running backs that are like, we're optimistic about, and then they don't have the opportunities we hope for. I can go back. I mean, last off season, there was Zamir white and you know, those type of players, but not with this draft capital and not with the history of rushing success for this football team. And so we all like Charbonnet. Um, yeah, he's good. The fact he can catch the football, uh, the fact that, you know, Walker dealt with injuries multiple times, including starting last season, you have put, you know, it's one of those things you don't want to let go of. Like Kenneth Walker in Dynasty Leagues and then in terms of the regular season, we are so desperate as fantasy players to find a running back that can be the guy. Mm -hmm. There aren't very many of them. And he could have been. Yeah. <laughs> could have been a contender. The, uh, the When I was looking at the split, I went and I looked back, you know, of – by the way, I have Walker at ten still. So uh, that you know, I have him uh, currently at let's see, eighteen. Uh, I went. I looked back because th they just did this. The Seahawks just did this. They drafted a running back in the first round when they had a an incumbent player who was a, a seventh round draft pick who looked like he could have been their guy. And they went. And they took a first round running back, Rashad Penny, and when Chris, they had Carson, and they had Chris Carson back then, and it, everything of history said Rashad Penny's the first round running back he's going to come in and be their primary guy like he will steal Chris Carson's lunch money it's gonna happen it did not happen and Chris Carson was the guy for multiple years after that and Rashad Penny kind of became the the secondary option I think that it, that Walker can still be the number one guy he for home run hitting 
he is fast. I mean, he's much, much faster than uh, the Charbonnet. You know, we have, uh, what, a uh, four three eight at 2.11. Like, he, he's a, a fast running back. So I still believe in him. It it does take, you know, a, a lot off of the top of the excitement for Kenneth Walker because I think even, Andy, you have him ranked at 10. Uh, Kyle, do we know what's his best ball ADP right now? Uh, Kenneth Walker, if you could pull that out I'll, for I'll me. Put, I'll look it up. Uh, but I feel like in redraft, once the home leagues start coming around, Kenneth Walker is going to be drafted way ahead of where we have him projected. We also had Kenneth Walker drafted in the second round last year. Yeah. Uh, in, with Rashad Penny. Oh, so running back 15 right now in best ball. That's, not, that's actually not bad at all. Like I said, I, I don't feel like this is one of those things we have to litigate all the way to conclusion here in the middle of May. It's just one of those things I'm going to pay close attention to because if there's a groundswell for Charbonnet in training camp, believe it. They, they drafted him in a position where he can be heavily utilized. It's not how I have it stated yet. Jason chose to go that direction now, but it's a realistic possibility. Yeah, and and, and the opposite is true. Like Mike said, the, uh, the example from this same – team and organization uh Rashad Penny played most of his rookie year and he was on a 17 game pace of only 105 carries during that season while I believe it was like near 300 carry pace for uh Chris Carson so it certainly could be hey Charbonnet you're a rookie you're the backup um it's more my fear of touchdown and receptions sure. specifically it, the funny thing is we get to we get a new case study every year from Seattle Right. They provide us the material. Can't wait for them to draft a second round running back next year. No matter how good Charlie yeah, Oh, they're is. both going to yeah. be great and unnecessary. When I looked at, uh, when I stepped back from my rankings, the one thing I wanted to point out as kind of a stat surprise was just really what I think the true high end potential is for Justin Herbert. Um, I have him leading the NFL in attempts and completions at the end of 2023. Um, and he's the kind of player pocket passer where if he has the boom touchdown year where they, there's fluctuation with a pocket passer, Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, year, in, in years past, Matthew Stafford in Detroit, Matt Ryan, if you get that kind of boom touchdown total year, I think Justin Herbert's going to be the steal at the quarterback position in the draft. I mean, we've talked a lot about how long do you wait for quarterbacks? Are you too afraid to do it if you don't get one of the top guys? Look, this is a quarterback that already had a 5,000-yard, 38-touchdown season in 2021. Everything this offseason, I mean, think about what he went through last year. Injured Mike Williams, injured Keenan Allen, no Jalen Guyton, injured himself. I was gonna, yeah, I was going to bring mean, up the ribs. And then you, you had an offensive coordinator that was canned at the end of the season. Now you have Kellen Moore's arrival. You have uh, the return of Jalen Guyton. You have Johnston drafted, Quentin Johnston in the in the – you know, first round of the NFL draft, I think that the pieces are there right now. And the division is one where I see a lot of high scoring battles. Patrick Mahomes, Russell Wilson. Um Patrick Mahomes at least. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. I was a little surprised you went back to Russell Wilson there. Well, I just think that there's going to be some some high scoring games in that sure. division. Uh we'll see what Russ does. But you know, Sean Payton's arrival and, and the optimism around Denver. And obviously Jimmy Garoppolo is a high flyer. Oh, of course. So he's so exciting. Be that ready. Devontae Adams wants out already. Um, but no, I think Justin Herbert is the kind of right now the target for me in drafts. Yeah. Uh, because I, don't st I still don't want to take an Allen Mahomes where they're going to go. Probably not Hurts where he's going to go. Um, there are still questions around Lamar. We haven't seen an upper echelon season from him in a while. So I think my target is going to be Herbert. And I think I said earlier in the offseason, we were talking about this, this could be a pattern. Like I might take the lower performing Burrow or Herbert for a while. Like I think Burrow is going obviously ahead of Herbert. Uh -huh. And so I think I might just choose the this year's, uh, you know, ugly performance, uh, Every single season. It's basically who had Impressive. a lower touchdown rate last season because the touchdowns are the right. least sticky metric. You go, you look at Aaron Rodgers' illustrious first ballot Hall of Fame career, and you see him throw for a ton of touchdowns one year and not as many the next year. There, there are so many ways that these NFL teams are trying to score, and it doesn't always come through the passing game. 
if you give Justin Herbert with the amount of passing attempts he gets, just the NFL average touchdown rate, he bounces back and is a great pick. And and with Kellen Moore Late there. Late fourth round pick right now. And that's to say nothing of his rushing, right? His first two years, he averaged 268 rushing yards and four rushing touchdowns. Got injured last year, pretty much didn't run. It's like 140 yards, no rushing touchdowns. So if you add on that, you know, you look at like Mahomes. Mahomes adds more in the rushing game than you really think because he's such a great passer. Herbert can. He has the physical tools to do so. And looking at the numbers for just like talking about. he still about, is all Eckler. Yes. And Kellen Moore, right? The Kellen Moore bump for Dak Prescott was massive. I mean, Dak Prescott went from a like a 3,600-yard passer uh, to a nearly 5,000 yard passer. Now, I, uh, there's other uh, variables at play of the the Dallas defense, you know, allowing a bunch of points and everything. But from 2018 to 2019, Dak Prescott jumped up 1,100 yards. He jumped up eight touchdowns, and I mean, this is just in 16 games played. So, I mean, he went from like middling, mid tier quarterback production to top, top tier quarterback production. So, if you give that opportunity to a player who's I think Herbert's proven himself at this point that with the right weapons around him and the in the right coaching scheme, he can be a a top three fantasy quarterback. It comes down to the touchdowns, but I'm I side more with you, Andy, of I think he is extremely interesting at his ADP with all the changes that have been made in the background for him that could turn into just an absolute monster season. When Joshua Palmer can be your number four option right, or your number three option, depending on how Quentin Johnston progresses, and you still kept Eckler, and we, we haven't talked a lot about Gerald Everett. Like, mm -hmm. It's going to be a very difficult offense to stop if things go according to plan, and obviously injuries, that's been a problem for them. Um, we could blink, and, and Allen and Williams could be out again. But And their offensive line was injured. There, there's a lot of reasons to be pro-Chargers offense this year. Mike, what was your takeaway in terms of a stat surprise from your... So, the most surprising guy, or maybe not the most, but one of them, it's Aaron Rodgers, and his projections, I think, can go kind of all over the map. I you know I have his upside at, at a four and a half, which, and the, but his risk is at a seven. So, I know that inherently, it's a very dangerous pick, but he's back. Like The, the changes from uh, from last year to this year... He's back with uh, with Nathaniel Hackett as the offensive play caller, of which he won you know MVPs and was absolutely fantastic. Uh, just his numbers, you know, four thousand yards, but throwing up massive uh, touchdown numbers, thirty seven and forty eight. That the touchdowns plummeted to twenty six. He didn't have Devontae Adams, and so the fact that he's got his 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 old play caller back, Garrett Wilson. They don't he. Probably doesn't have the you know the mind mesh that he has with Devontae Adams, but Garrett Wilson is a strong enough wide receiver that you have a true number one. Alan Lazard moves over with him there, and Brees Hall is going to be back to health. There's so much there, and you don't have to like you don't have to fudge the numbers you know very much of the the pass rate can go up just just slightly from last year, and Aaron Rodgers comes out looking really really good for me. It it comes down to those touchdowns. But I do believe that the the touchdown percent rises, goes back to a normal Aaron Rodgers type of year, and that puts. What did him you in, project him at touchdowns? Uh, th I have him at thirty two. Okay, so I have him at thirty two touchdowns, and that makes him a top ten quarterback for me. I uh, yeah, I mean that's the highest. I mean of our three. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I'm I, the most uh, bullish. I've got him at sixteen. I I am not convinced one hundred percent. I obviously lost Devontae Adams, lost Hackett. Maybe that is the entire story. But I also think there is a chance that Aaron Rodgers, at his age, is getting worse and will yes. move there's, across there's and, and is not the same uh, MVP that he was two years ago. A year in the NFL is a long time. I will be interested to see what the run-pass situation is for the first six weeks of the season with Brees Hall, sure. who's you know supposed to be healthy, but I don't know what the workload's going to be like in the first – handful of weeks we took a look at this schedule for them it's a little bit rough for the first half like if they if they end up going through week 10 and they're 500 I think they make the playoffs and they close strong but I it's going to be a very interesting start to, and they have a good defense so it's like I, I'll be curious to see how much Aaron Rodgers um, 
has on his shoulders to start the year. Um, all right, let's go ahead and get into some news. News and notes from around the league. Not a ton to talk about, um, but let's start here. Ty Montgomery. What are we hearing about? <laughs> oh, man. The name from days gone by. Ty Montgomery. The quote I'm seeing, a great chance to be the third down back and take the load off Ramondre Stevenson. Yeah, hopefully y'all out there are listening to the Dynasty podcast because we have a uh, a segment every single week where right now we call it take or leave it where we just kind of throw out just a, a passing thought. And often we talk about nasty. nasty boys that might be out there on Dynasty waivers. And I brought up just all the other guys from the, the Patriots, you know, of, of – uh, uh, Kevin Harris, you got what Pierre? I can't even Pierre Strong, Pierre, Pierre Strong, Strong Jr. Yeah. And the fact that Ty Montgomery is still there and still under contract. He only played one game, uh, and I know that James Robinson is there, but I, I think I'm not 100 percent sure that James Robinson makes this team. Uh, what's he's on his third team in the last five months or whatever? But Ty Montgomery last year, if you remember, was brought in, started to get a drumbeat of. He's going to be more involved than than people really want to think about or or talk into existence that this is a possibility, and this is great news for Ramondre Stevenson. But at the same time, Ty Montgomery, if he is truly the third down running back, which he's a converted wide receiver, excellent pass catcher, in in a really deep PPR league, probably more of like a, a deeper dynasty league, Ty Montgomery should be rostered. <laughs> That's gross. I, I see. I, I'm. I. I kind of take this as off season news that I don't care that much about. Okay. Because because Ty Montgomery's involvement is. I mean, for one, I don't understand why. Why is the former running back coach commenting? I, I mean, he hasn't been the coach of the Patriots since 2021. He was on a podcast. So, asked the question. So and... I mean, he doesn't know what the heck's going on. Ty Montgomery has had like a total of like 20 receptions in four years. I, I will I will allow camp to arrive before I work. I, I would be more concerned about James Robinson having a role personally than Ty Montgomery because I think Ramondre, like this is good news for Ramondre if we're talking about Ty Montgomery. Oh, oh yeah, it's good news for everyone who gets to draft Ramondre a little bit lower because the 30-year-old scat back Ty Montgomery, he, he might be involved in thir third downs. Ramondre is not going to be out there getting 90% workload. I mean, it, there will be someone else involved. But when we're talking about Ty Montgomery, uh, a, a post-injured um, James Robinson and Pierre Strong and all these names, like this is a pro Ramondre Stevenson yes, it is. Uh, mouth. Brown's not expected to re-sign Kareem Hunt. <laughs> mouth. Yes, my mouth is pro Ramondre Stevenson. Okay. I did miss the end of that. Huh. Okay. Um, your exclamation point. I yeah. missed it. Uh, no Kareem Hunt back to the Browns. That's Seems what we're hearing. I'm, I'm wondering if no Kareem Hunt back to the NFL. <laughs> he, he will be hanging out. Waiting you know, for an injury. Waiting for an injury. Uh, there, there comes a point where some players are just, they have a different view of themselves, Cam Newton, than the NFL does. And when they don't meet, then you don't play. I mean, it's like the team. There are teams that would love to add Cream Hunt to their to their running back room at like a price that they view Cream Hunt at now. And I don't know if he views himself that way. Just yeah. speculating. I yep. mean, he hasn't found a home yet. So, um, and you would have thought there were teams like Denver or you know with opportunities to to strengthen their backfields that are that are bringing back injured players. I think he will find a team by August. Hayden Hurst absent from OTAs, hernia surgery, no concerns, should be back soon. Mitch Trubisky, two-year extension. Um, With the Steelers, if you didn't remember where he is at. <laughs> he started quite a few games last year, didn't he? Uh, a handful, I think like three. Maybe he came in yeah, uh, they during the, the injury later in the year. Does he, does he start any games this year? Not without injury to Pickett. I don't think Pickett plays himself off the field. I was talking to some Steeler fans over the weekend. Uh oh, very enthusiastic about Kenny Pickett. You don't say. Yeah, the 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 fans I, of the I just franchise thought, were optimistic. Well, I mean, they they asked, they did ask my opinion. And what was it? Yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know if he's got what it takes. But they were com 
I mean, they were convinced. I do not believe he has what it takes to be a great quarterback, and I believe he is in a situation around him to be forced into being a good enough quarterback to succeed long enough to have an average NFL career. Like, it, I think if he went to a bad franchise, he would just flame out. But he's going to win games. He's going to be well coached. He's going to do enough because of uh, Tomlin and the, the the organization, their draft pedigree, uh, the talent around him. Where he's going to, he, he'll make a playoffs. I I think he will make the playoffs in his career. <laughs> did you say a playoffs? A playoffs. He, 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 he will make a playoff. I heard it, and I didn't know if that at meant least this, one. I didn't know if that meant this year or not. I mean. <laughs> Unfortunately, that you're right. I mean, they, when you look at the division and the quarterback strength and the teams, and you're like, okay, they should be last, and they won't. The Steelers will not end up last in that division. Something will happen. Somebody will fold, and it won't be the Steelers. At Don't least. Don't bet against blue collar. <laughs> that's that's Pittsburgh. He makes the playoffs. They're hard working down there. They make a lot of playoffs. <laughs> you know a lot about Pittsburgh. Um, so much yeah. <laughs> steel and stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, any other news, Brooksy? No, sir. Let's take a quick break here and come back with some mailbag. Well, the, ste the Steelers are, is it Steel Mill? Is that what it is, all the steel mills in Pittsburgh? I believe so. And what do those do, Jason? Well, those produce steel, I would imagine. <laughs> They they mill it. They, yeah, they're they, gonna mill about. Uh -huh. What do they, they? What do they make it from? Oh, they mine it. Do you mine steel? <laughs> I genuinely have no uh, idea how steel is made. Um, it's got to be mined, right? It's, it's gotta no, be a, no. For I real? Well, it's, I mean, not the steel itself. Well, yeah. I mean, some is ingredients. Steel, isn't steel <laughs> iron? That's been. I mean, something's been done to steel it. Steel should be. A, it's a metal that's a. What do they call that when they put two metals together or whatever? Isn't that what it is? Forged. <laughs> we are really smart. <laughs> oh man! An alloy. That's is yeah. It, is, that's what I is meant. steel an alloy. Al, we are staring at you. We need your we are help. Staring at you, needing it this is, metallurgy it's, help. It's made from iron ore, uh, compound of iron, oxygen, and other minerals that occur in nature. Sorry, yeah. I had put it in the Slack channel. I wasn't chiming in, but yes, it's just iron. Well, it's, it's, there's a process that is done to make it is stronger. Is it an alloy or is it not an alloy? I don't believe it's an alloy. Okay, what is an alloy? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's a whole other subject. Blue collar. <laughs> Chips alloy. That, they're <laughs> delicious cookie. <laughs> That's what it is. What? There, there is alloyed steel, which is... Uh, yeah, there is. Several different elements. Magnesium, Thank nickel, you. chromium. Bro fundamentally Brooks, I didn't want to leave you alloy. out of this. If you have a lot of steel expertise, will you feel free to chime in in the future? Yeah, you guys got it all. Okay, Perfect. Good. So an alloy is a metal made by combining chips. two or more metallic you went to elements. Chips Ahoy? It was bad. I I, I respect it. Thank you. Know your uh, <laughs> know your strengths. Uh, were we done talking about steel? Yes, please. <laughs> Mailbag. Bag, oh, bag. I'm so sorry to all the steel mill workers out there. You're doing great work. I love your product. I mean, you're doing something we couldn't do, that's for sure. We wouldn't know the first thing. I would straight up just die. I mean, if I was in like any factory, I'd just be like, this is too warm I like in here. Imagine Jason down there with like mining, like, where is the steel? Uh -huh. <laughs> all I'm getting is iron. <laughs> All right, into the mailbag we go, answering your questions, helping you out. Uh, if you have a question that you'd like to submit to the show, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, click the Submit a Question button, or dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Start with a voicemail. Hey, ballers. It's Brendan from Detroit, Michigan. Listen, I got a quick question about rules. Um, so recently we had a cheater in my league who was trying to swap around the schedule for his own game. Um, how do you deal with that? Thanks. Love the show. Bye-bye. Oh, man. So the question is, someone was, at least we're accusing them of cheating by moving around the schedule for personal gain. So this sounds like another rotten commissioner <laughs> of which we have fielded many, many questions. And I, every time I hear it, you're like, you're not shocked, but at the same time, it's, what are these people doing? You're you're playing a f like a game for fun. I I know that some there's stakes out there, you know, like a, a, there's money to be made. But it's 
Why are we doing this? What is wrong with people? I, so let me push back a little bit here. <laughs> oh, sir. On behalf of rotten commissioners no, everywhere. No, I'm not pushing back against rotten commissioners. I'm curious how it is possible at this point right now to know that you are making a schedule that benefits you. I believe you. This, they're saying that this happened last year. Uh, well, when you're making the schedule, I'm just saying, like, is this in the middle of the year when you know which teams are bad and which teams are good? And you're like, I'm going to switch and I'm playing this team this week. That would obviously be Bush League that would unacceptable be insane. and insane. <laughs> but I, I know that we update our schedule manually in almost every league it's, we ever play. It's like work. Like every every Friday you find out what your upcoming schedule is for the week. <laughs> yeah. Who am I playing this <laughs> week? Just... I'll tell you when I do some numbers. <laughs> Just keep scheduling Jeremy in the Dynasty League week <laughs> after week after week. But, yeah, I mean, I guess in a Dynasty League, you'd have an idea of what teams are strong or weak. But I, I'm just thinking, is there a situation here where yeah. there was a perception that this was, you know, he was, oh, you get to play bye that weeks? guy twice and he sucks. Yeah. Bye, bye weeks, weeks, maybe. Oh, it just it's a huge allegation you're making here. It sounded like it was also confirmed a little bit. But what do you do with it I once mean, it's confirmed? Yeah, I mean, you can't, you cannot play with these commissioners. No, you have to have a different. Breaking news. Wait, what? It's very important to me that we get back to this discussion. Fundamentally, steel is an alloy <laughs> of <laughs> iron and carbon. Thank goodness. That's right. Okay, so it is an alloy. While you would die, I would make it at least <laughs> to three <step> days <laughs> into a in a steel mill. Um. You know, it's pretty hard to convince rotten to become not rotten. No, but you got to so you got to bail out. It's uh probably a peace out situation or or the one last ditch thing you can do if you like the cuz I mean, come on, let's be honest. You're in a league, there're probably people you like, you don't want to lose it. The the last ditch is to take it over. Yeah. Ah, oh, you offer, stage a coup. Off well, I, I didn't mean <laughs> even the coup. I was like do it as a nice thing. Say, "Hey, this has been a lot of work. Would you like me to run it?" Cause that that would be an option. The other one that you had is more like on a pirate ship. Well, <laughs> you could you could phrase it like you of like, hey, I know that this is a lot of work, and that's why I'm going to do it. Yeah, you could <laughs> be more forceful. Yeah, I mean, maybe have a league vote. Say, we need a new commissioner. Just the, is or, the poll just do you want your commissioner to be a cheater? Yes or no? And then when they vote no, you go okay, they voted me in. Or you take everyone else, you know, the eleven if it's a twelve person league, and you say, hey, we're going to do our own league without. Without Sir Cheats a lot, <laughs> that that's an option. So no, it it, it stinks uh, that there yeah. are situations like that. Um, so what, ridiculous. from my experience, it's not been. It's always been leagues where somebody uh, put it together by themselves. That's kind of what happened because they have a different sense of kind of like possess like having it be theirs. This is my league. I will do what it's I like want. It's like I'm starting a league yeah. and I'm inviting 11 of you to play in my league as opposed to you know we are having We a all got together. together and then somebody is the volunteer Just don't do commissioner. It. So um yeah, that's tough. That's a tough situation. All right, uh YouTube question, uh do you guys have a specific way you set the schedule each year or is it just random? So it kind of follows up on that. Um Traditionally, what we do, and it's you know it's narrow and it's different for every league size, is we do a schedule creator and manually input them every year, and we do this because we strategically we're we're in a league where there are um, three divisions of four teams each, twelve team league, and we want to play the division mates two times, and so we start the year playing your three division mates. And we end the year before the playoffs playing your three division mates. Those are the only teams we play twice. And we we just do that because it's kind of a competitive um, situation that we want in our leagues. So there are schedule makers out there. I think Football Guys has a pretty good one. If you need to go make, you know, you specify how many divisions, you specify how many teams, you can put in the names, then you produce a randomized one. Also, it's built into most of these platforms. If you just want purely random, you can go in there and smash the button. Yeah, and then when you get that random one, you plug it in manually, and you just make the tweaks that benefit you as the commission. Yeah. And you move on. Yeah. Who would yeah. know? <laughs> How would they know? Um, all right. Know. <laughs> Voicemail question. What's up, ballers? Have a keeper league question for y'all. 
have to choose two of these three running backs. Brees Hall for a third-round value, Ramondre for a sixth-round value, or Miles Sanders at a seventh-round value. Thanks, guys. Dinner butter for life. Dinner butter for life, indeed. I Ramondre love, for a sixth, Sanders for a seventh, or Brees for a third. I love this question. you got to keep two. Because it's going to force Jason to make a terrible, terrible decision. Look, Ramondre's locked in for me. That, that, think, one's, I, I that one's easy. I was going to go with the two late guys. Okay. I'm going Ramondre Miles Sanders. I mean, Jason? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's why I know. Yeah. Mike's not wrong. This uh, this forces me to make a difficult decision on my brand um, <laughs> as I am madly in love with the talent of Brees Hall. I still have worries of getting off to a slow start this season, uh, coming back from the ACL. I believe I – have him the lowest of the three of us right now, and yeah, while do. I still Hater. think, while I he's think, my champion. <clears throat> yeah, my champ too. Oh, God, no, that's, he's Mike's champion. That's yeah. too far. I, I have him ranked the highest right now, um, and he's my answer. I'm taking Ramondre and Brees. Oh, are you? Yeah. Okay. So t to me, Ramondre because I love Brees Hall. Yeah, I, I know. I, I think Ramon uh, Brees is a decent value in the third round, but there's a lot of great players in the third round. There are not. A lot of good players in the seventh round. I will take whoever. It's a I... two keeper, Jay. So you need to factor that in. That the well, third round is. Well, but the, this is a keeper where they cost the 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 you know the the round. So you're still going to get a third round type of value there. Um, so I'm I'm going to take Ramondre and Sanders. Miles Sanders in the sixth and seventh have two good running backs and keep my third pick overall. I think I think it's going to be a rough first five weeks for Brees. Buffalo, Dallas, New England, Kansas City, Denver, Philly. Let me let's make it six weeks. The, the only That's six great great defenses. One one thing to argue in Mike's favor and say Ramondre and Brees, and I think that means all three of us have Ramondre as kind of a locked in. He's yes. he's young. He's a stud. He's in the sixth round. He could be a top five back this season. Um, is that because this is a keeper league? There is value to Brees. Beyond just oh he gets off to a slow start, Brees Hall will be you know barring a cat catastrophic injury he will be a first round pick next year for sure a guy that you're going to want to keep no matter what so uh, you know the, if you want to take the the youth and the upside and the longevity with Brees and Ramondre I'm fine with that yeah that'll be interesting because if you if you do I wonder what you keep him for in this league and that's not right. information get, we have do you, do you get, get him, him at a third every year or are you or are you ADP or something. All right, uh, this question from Jonathan in Wisconsin. Keep two. A.J. Brown, Amon Ross St. Brown, Mark Andrews, PPR League, 14 Ooh. teams. You start three wideouts. Oh, man. I am I'm kicking Andrews back. Easy peasy. I am all about Mark Andrews this year, but in a three-wide receiver league, to be able to have A.J. Brown and Amon Ross St. Brown, who are basically in a, in a three-wideout league, you're talking about, late first, early second round players, uh, the value is just too good. I, I'm absolutely keeping those wide receivers. You're really, you're not even considering Mark Andrews there? Not when... You just went on a, a rant of how Travis Kelsey is overvalued because Mark Andrews is the guy to go get. But it, that that wasn't the entirety of it. It's the tight end position. Uh, they're being overvalued. It, we're now comparing Mark Andrews against A.J. Brown and comparing Mark Andrews against Amon Ross St. Brown in a full PPR league. Those guys will provide far more value um, in, a, in a league where you have to start three wide receivers, which is what this says, I'm definitely on the wide receiver side. And again, I, I say that as someone who loves Mark Andrews. It's I mean, easy to, for me. It's not for you. No, it's not. 14 teams. I mean, you, you get one. You'll have one top-tier receiver, which I would keep A.J. Brown of the two. And then in a 14-teamer to have a difference-making tight end. That's I think that's a massive advantage where yeah, Amon Ra is going to be fantastic, but you can like piecemeal some of that production together, and I don't think you can at the tight end position. I'm going A.J. Brown and Andrews here. Do neither of you – am I the only one that thinks that there's a possibility that Mark Andrews' season isn't as good as everybody else thinks it will be? Uh, do, you guys, yeah. do you guys look at him as a guaranteed number two Top. or higher tight end? I look at him as a guaranteed number three or higher tight end. Yeah, that's how I look too. Three or higher. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, it's a tough one because I can see a, it's just a ribbon, right, in the cloth. Like most of the cloth is nice, 
but I still see a pathway with a team that passed the ball to tight ends 41% of the time last year with no wideouts, with a talented Isaiah Likely. I still see a path to him not being a 25% target share guy and, and dropping down into the teens if, if Zay Flowers emerges. Yeah, I mean, I, I've got him right now for 115 targets this year, which is not some crazy number. You know, he had 154 targets two Correct. years ago. Correct. That's not the type of season that I necessarily see him having with this wide receiver core, but still with the tight end landscape, that puts him in great company. And, sure. and the efficiency sure. and the touchdown opportunity with a better offense should rise. Okay. Well, yeah, the touchdowns, I think, will be a big factor there. and We know Lamar looks to him in the red zone so mm -hmm. often. All right, um, YouTube question. This one from Jacob. I'm not going to try to pronounce your last name. It starts with a D. Uh, what's the best way to recruit players for a dynasty league? Not flippantly, because that will suck. Yeah. Um, have you tried, like... Just like uh, standing on the street corner with the oh, uh, with the, the sign. Like, yeah, do you flip the sign? You like do a whole show? A sign? Oh, yeah, I, no, because a sign spinner is just yeah, it's to point. That's the someplace. point somewhere. I think no, this is a, just a dynasty league. What if you had a laptop starting. sitting over to the side? Could it point to the laptop? Ooh, maybe. Yeah. But, so, you, but, but that you, inf that infers they have to pull over and come to your laptop. What about a megaphone? Well, yeah, if you're on the side of the street with with the sign, you got to have the megaphone. Huh. Hmm. Dynasty I mean, League coming. All right. Real answer. What? How dare you? Is never coming. What I would do. <laughs> no. Um, I mean, best case scenario is it's someone that you know, that you're close with, that you know likes football or likes fantasy football. Step one, tier one, would be those friends and family around you that, that share those passions. Step two would be probably online people that you know you you know from Twitter that you know from the Discord on the fantasy footballers. Obviously, we have FootClanLeagues.com, which takes you to our Discord community. You can meet people that are amazing. I mean, you already know that their uh, their values are great, and that their sense of humor is great, and that they're good at fantasy. You already know that, so you can grab them and put them in your league uh, and fill the rest what's, out. What's the phrase you don't want to hear when they're joining, Brooks? Don't want to hear. Sure, I guess I'll join. <laughs> yeah, that, that's not a good sign for something that takes that much commitment. Um, much better to have 10 committed uh, managers than 12 with two people that are barely playing. YouTube question from uh, – well, I'm not reading that either. Um, <laughs> we'll go initials FP. Come, Come on. Also, I pretty much blame Brooks for putting this in here. Uh, any chance fireball uh, – Jones has a resurgence. A.K.A. Tim Patrick, if you're new to the show. I we, think, we upgraded his name to be more alluring. I think for sure. I think Tim Patrick is um, – I think he's got similarities to Zay Jones in the sense that, you know, it's not a sexy name that anybody pays attention to, but you're really, really useful to your quarterback, and the quarterback falls in love with you. Tim Patrick was already building that rapport with Russell Wilson last offseason before the injury. Cortland Sutton has fallen out of favor. Jerry Judy is a young and up-and-coming receiver. I think that there's a decent chance Tim Patrick, you know, the injury was early last year too. Like, I think there's a good chance he, um, that he, that he can have a resurgence. But what does yeah. what does a resurgence look like? Fantasy relevance, Zay Jones. Yeah, I mean, Zay Jones, I, I think Zay Jones is a great comp. He's someone that could be a wide receiver three by the end of the year if he catches some touchdowns on a few moon balls. He's a very good wide receiver. They paid him a lot of money on a, a decent contract. I know he's a little bit older. He's coming off an injury, but he's got a long time from that injury, so I'm not worried at all about that given when he got injured. And his cost is nothing. So, I mean, if you're doing a redraft league, he's not drafted. He will not be drafted at all by anyone, not even in the last round. If you're doing underdog best ball drafts where you're going 18 deep, then he is. he's currently as ADP there is 206. So he's basically one of those guys that you're looking at with your last pick. And when you're looking at guys in the 200s in ADP, it, it, it's hard to find players that you say, okay, well, he could be attached to a great quarterback. He could have a lot of uh, touchdowns. Sean Payton is now there. I mean, there there are avenues for him to be extremely relevant for the price he costs right now. Yeah, if it's he had just gotten paid before yeah, he, his yes. injury last year, and something to keep in mind. I mean, he didn't play a down 
last year, but he played. He had 85 targets the season before. But he's so. But he he's will older. be 30. He's older. He's yeah. going to turn 30 this year, heading into what is technically year six, year five of actual playing at that age. The ceiling that he has hit has been 740 yards and six touchdowns. What's so it's, the breakfast situation with Russ? Is, we, he, we eating, do, is we, he eating breakfast with Russ? We do need to know that, um, which I don't have that information uh, currently. It. It. He was sitting courtside at the Nuggets game with Russ. Okay. okay. Is that, I mean, they probably yeah, that's, yeah, that's something. No, that's at least dinner. You don't go to a, a game without bar together. dinner. But the uh, – has Res he had a danger witch? Resur no, no one has. Please, no. Uh, the resurgence to to call it that when, you're, when your high end is 740 and 6, I, mean, I, I think he could be useful. I don't know if I would, would get him to – Would that just be a surgence? Ye yes. He just yes. needs to have his first surgence. But right? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. I don't know that that – That wouldn't be – Can a you resurge back to 740 and 6? I don't know. I don't I think you can. I wouldn't say I was a surge. No. Yeah, no, you, you if you can't got if on your a name wave is, you, like that, you wouldn't it wouldn't be a good record. <laughs> you can if your name is Tim Patrick. But if we're talking about Fireball Jones, there no, you that's not a research. You gotta go over a thousand to surge. Absolutely. Especially in a seventeen game season. Uh, so I what are seeing, your odds of a surgence? I think the odds of a surgence are fifty percent, which is great Oof. for someone that, that I got him much lower than that. Did you stat him out with I'd be curious if we if we want to glance over at Tim Patrick target distribution. I have him at 16.7% target share. I have him at a 14% target share. I have him at a 14% target share as well. 91 targets. 80 targets. 78 targets. Oh, mm. yeah. This, see, this is not looking now, good. Now, how many targets <laughs> do you have for Fireball Jones? Fireball Jones has 120,000 <laughs> targets. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, you'll get to see all of these. It, by the way, I didn't even mention it at the top. The rankings are up on the website. Oh, the yeah. 2023 rankings for... The position groups are up on the website. They just went up uh, end of last week, so you can see where everybody is ranked right now. Yep. And, and then the detailed player projections are inside the Ultimate Draft Kit. Yeah, so if you uh, – all the free rankings, go check them out. You use them for your drafts that you're doing right now if you're doing you know underdog best balls or whatever. And then if you get the Ultimate Draft Kit, you got a couple days left at pre-order pricing, and then it's going to be up live for you to look at every stat breakdown, everything. And if you get the UDK Plus – you got information right now. That'll do it for today's episode of the show. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for listening. And we'll be back with another episode on Thursday. Talk to you then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.